voices from the grave. From the grave. Fifty Barclay Square, by Dylan Ritson. We're all of us creatures of fancy, haunted by dreams we hope may one day come to pass, or nightmares we pray shall stay locked up always in the secret chambers of our souls. Yet whether they will or no, that none may say, except God, or fate, or the devil. My father. He once had hopes. He had a fortune, wife, child, a daughter whom he hoped should one day make a family of her own. Yet one by one, his dreams were taken from him. His wife by illness, fortune by a fall in the market. He himself died soon after, leaving behind him naught but debts, and me, an orphan, alone in the world. I made a living whatever way I could. Met a fella put me to work above a tavern, entertaining male guests at a shilling a turn. In such a life, there's little room for hopes, much less dreams. But it was them alone got me through those nights, listening to the boatman's stories in the parlour, and dreaming of a better life. Most of them tales, I'd hear them one day, forget them the next. But there was one stranger. More chilling than the rest, which I shall always remember, because that one, it really happened, and it happened to me. Shilling to a pound, shilling to a pound. I will lay you a shilling to a pound. Watch the lady, watch the lady. Round and round and round she goes. Where will she stop? That no one knows. <laughs> well, my dear, what's it to be? Three cups. Which one's she under? It's. It must be that one. Sure. Choose again if you like. No. It, it, no. It's. It's that one. I saw it. Did you now? <laughs> oh no! She's up and gone. That she has, but not so very far now. <laughs> magic. That's what it is. No, it's a trick. That's all. Why, if I could work magic for real, do you think I'd be sitting here talking to the likes of you? He'd be as rich as Harry Houdini himself. Twice as rich, I reckon, because I'm at least twice as handsome. <laughs> <laughs> now, as it happens, Angel and me. We've done our own bit of escapology this very night. Really? Escape from our ships, what he means. Oh, I see. The Penelope. She put into port this morning. All the pounds she's taken after the four months at sea. She needs some work done on her. I bet love and care and attention. <laughs> Same reason we're here and all. <laughs> Where is it you come from? The Indies. Well, Jamaica. You heard of it? Never. In our time, we've been everywhere. Indies, our tropics. South China Seas. You must have seen so many wonderful things. Oh, inside of the ships, all we ever see. That and the occasional house of disrepute, of course. <laughs> Sailors' needs being what they is. Did you never see anything wonderful? How do you mean? I don't know. Strange, mysterious, magical, even. I don't really believe in all that, do you? You sailors, I thought you were meant to be superstitious. Some is, some ain't. Myself, I've known many a good man go to an early grave, and there never was a superstition that kept him from it. Though you do hear stories. The stories, that's all they is. Fact is, it don't profit a fellow to trust in anything he can't see, smell, or <laughs> touch. Oh, I hope there's more to this life than that. Indeed, I do. Not that I imagine I'll ever know for certain. Trapped in here, you, you don't see so much of the world, of anything really. Well, perhaps there's something we can do about that. How do you mean? Don't need a brave oceans to see sights as would amaze you. Chill you to the bone just to look at them. As it goes, I know a place not above half a league from here. Do you? We'll go there now if you like. No, I don't know. Mr. Cuff, he don't like us to stray too far. Mr. Cuff, who's he? <laughs> Who do you think he is? Her husband. If you just want somewhere to spend the night, there's good rooms upstairs for a price. Well then, we'll come back after. What do you say? Look, it ain't far. You won't be gone long enough to be missed. It's just I got to earn my keep somehow. <laughs> Don't you worry, my dear. <clears throat> There's time enough for that. Where are we 
you going? Why, don't you like surprises? I'd just like to know where I'm being taken, that's all. This is Bartley Square, ain't it, Martin? That it is, one of the most famous in all London. Fine houses, aren't they? Politicians, nobility. They're the only ones living in a place like this. Not that there's many of them about this time of night. Oh, I should be heading back. Folk will be wondering where I got to. Wait. There it is. What? You see? Through them trees. You mean the house? That's it. 50 Barclay Square. And? What? Ain't you heard of it? That there is the most haunted house in all London. Haunted? I tell you, there's more folk died of fright in that house than any in Britain. Maybe the old empire. It don't look like much, though, does it? That's what our war boys said. Who? Sir Robert Warboys. Right honourable member of Parliament. Owner of the house was a personal friend of his. He told him its story, but war boys, he wouldn't believe him. So the owner bet him a hundred guineas he couldn't spend one night locked in the haunted room. Haunted room? And during the night, he was to ring once on the servant's bell to let him know he was content. If, however, he wanted to leave for some reason, he'd ring twice and they'd come let him out. What happened? Ran twice, did he? Yeah, that he did. Only it were too late. When they found him, he was lying in his bed, stone dead. Mouth agape, eyes bulging open, staring. His whole body in the grip of some great terror. What had he seen? No one knows. How could they? But whatever it was, the doctors, they said it had frozen the very blood in his veins. Is that true? Of course it ain't. He's just trying to scare you, that's all. It happened just like I told you. The story, it were in the newspapers everywhere. Don't you believe a word of it. Always fooling me, he is. Just his wife. Looks empty, doesn't it? What? The house. No lights, windows downstairs, all shuttered up. So? What do you say we take a closer look? How do you mean? Go inside, have a look around. I don't know. The window up there, it's open, look. Drain pipe beside it. To someone like you, Angel Led, that's as good as an invitation. What if someone saw? Well, watch out below. I, I don't want no part of this. I thought she was after some adventure. Well, perhaps she's right. We should head back. What's wrong, lad? Ain't the stomach for it? No, it ain't that. All you gotta do is slip inside, come down and open the door for us. Then what? We take a look around, satisfy our curiosity, then head back to the inn. No one any the wiser, and we has a nice little story to tell. What do you say? Where can he be? No need to fear. He'll be with us directly. You sure he got through the window? Well, didn't you see? Didn't I look? The window was so high, and what with the railings below, if he should have fallen... <laughs> Angel, he climbs masts twice that height at sea. On lookout, rigging sails. That's how he got his name. His name? Dwelling up there in the heavens. So far above the rest of us, sometimes he seems a very angel of God. I never heard of any angel guilty of breaking into somewhere that was forbidden them. If you disapprove, my dear, you're welcome to leave. Supposing there's someone in there, though, that he's been caught, or worse. We well, just suppose he ain't. They'd open the door and find us two well, waiting. Don't you here. set your mind a running now on things what ain't the case. If it's all the same, I... I'll be going now. As you please. Sorry, I was so long. Couldn't see to get down. Pitch Blackett is in there. What's wrong? Just, uh, just cold. That's all. Well, come in then. Shh, you hear something? Don't worry. There's no one home. The house, it's empty. I can't see nothing. Wait there. Where? Angel, where you gone? Where is he? Do you hear me? What's that? Let there be light. <laughs> where did you find the lamp, lad? In here. Look. It's covered. Looks strange, don't it? All them white sheets of everything. What muslin. They must be away. Who? The owner, whoever lives here. They've gone, left the place empty, all covered up. Here, Martin, look at this painting. Who do you suppose he is? Our host, most likely. No, see the clothes, lad? Old fashioned, they is. This chap, whoever he was, he's been in the ground a while now. Knife-like, ain't it, though? Like you could step out of the frame and shake your body hand. He'd just as soon slit your throat by the looks of him. <laughs> You're right there. He looks a miserable devil. Maybe he's that fella they say built a the place. Who's that? Myers, that was his name. 
He had the place built hundreds years ago or more for him and his betrothed to live in. Only the very day of their wedding, she jilted him, <gasps> ran off with another. The shop, they say, drove the poor devil from his wits and he passed the rest of his days a recluse, shut up alone in the empty house. By day, he'd sleep in the bed he'd had made for her. By night, wander the house with a candle, as though any minute expecting a return. And that he did even to his dying day. It's a sad story, is that? Sad? The man was a fool. Why, I'd as soon give up my soul to old Nick himself as to a woman. Would you? To fall in love, Angel, lad. That's to fall into a trap whereof no man may deliver you. If that tale don't teach you that, then nothing will. So that that's the end of the story? Oh, that it is. Unless, of course, you believe what some folks say. What's that? Over the years, there's many lived in this house who didn't die of fright, just ran mad. And amidst their babblings, all of them, they spoke of seeing this Myers, of his ghost, that is, what still makes his nightly vigil. And any he so finds, they say, who invades his quiet and does violence to his home. To them he does violence in return. Violence? Like what? I shouldn't like to say in present company, but be assured, he don't spare any on account of their sex. What he does, he does to man and woman alike. What's that light? What? That light there under the door. You've been in there, Angel. No, oh, shh. Put out that lamp. Just the gas lamps. Some fool must have forgot to turn them off. <sighs> Here, come and take a look at this. What is it? Looks like our host's prepared us a meal. Long great table there is. Place set either end. Oh, it must be the dining room. You ever see a table that long? Two people sit down there to eat, they hardly be able to see each other, let alone talk. What's that on the table? Give it here. What's it say? Can't make it out exactly. To whom it may concern. Uh, yeah, I um, thought as much. Must be a letter inside. Well, we can't open it. It ain't for us. Of course it is. To whom it may concern. But who else should it concern but us? Well, go on, my dear. Read it. <clears throat> Welcome. I have been expecting you for some time. Yet now you are here at last... It seems that I am not. Perceptive, ain't he? Please make yourselves at home. Take whatever it is that you require. Wait for me and be assured that I shall be with you before you know it. Not if we can help it, he won't. Go on. Well, that's the end. Well, that's it. No signature. Nothing. I call that a curious kind of letter to leave for a guest. A table. Perhaps he had it set for them what he was expecting. Just two places, though, aren't there? <laughs> well, he wants to know we were bringing female company. <laughs> Here. Do you suppose there's something to eat under them dishes? Starving, I am. Oh, what the... Oh, oh whatever it was, it's oh. rotten. Live with maggots by the looks of it. Must have been oh. left there weeks, maybe more. <sighs> Makes you wonder, don't it? Perhaps this host of ours, he ain't coming back at all. Oh, what kind of hospitality do you call that? All the same, it means we can do as we please. Ain't no one going to interrupt us. I thought we were going back now. Oh, the letter. It did say to make ourselves at home. Take whatever we wanted. Just look at that knife. Solid silver it is. Must be worth a bit. No one ever said anything about no stealing. Nor did they. A little souvenir, that's all I'm after. A knife? That's a strange kind of souvenir. You're right. House like this must have any number of fine things. No one's likely to notice if one or two of them goes missing. It ain't right. Don't you understand, girl? Tonight, the whole house, it's ours to do with as we please. When are you going to get another chance like this? Take a look around, explore the place. And if you see something you want, well, <laughs> we won't tell no one if you don't, eh? Someone there? Sorry, it's just me. What's that you're wearing? 
Quite a transformation, isn't it? It is that. What do you think? It's beautiful. Look like someone out of a picture or, uh, I, I don't know, a dream. The dress, it's white silk. I just found it hanging up on that mirror. Not a speck of dust on it. Like it was waiting for me. What? I don't know. Sounds strange, but when I first came in, it almost looked like it was someone. <sighs> Fits perfectly. Like it was made for you. Can you help fasten the back? If you want. Wedding dress, ain't it? I suppose so. Suits you. Only chance I'll ever get to wear one. <laughs> Don't say that. True, though, innit? I am what I am, and there's an end to it. All the same, I should have liked to be something else. An actress, maybe. On the stage. Well, you still could. I ain't no illusions. Just the same, when I put this dress on, almost fancied myself mistress of the house, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Don't suppose it hurts to pretend? You ever wonder what you might have been if you weren't a sailor? Not especially. Me, I, I never had much choice in the matter. Signed up with Mr Martin, I did. It was him what persuaded me. Do you always do what he tells you? I don't mind. A clever one he is. Cleverer than me at any rate. That's true enough. Oh, Martin. I didn't see you there. What's going on? Well, nothing. Fast work, angel led. I ain't left the two of you alone a few minutes. Already you got the girl walking up the aisle with you. They ain't like that. I ain't no objections, whatever the two of you was doing. I just came down to get me friend here. I need your help upstairs. What is it? Come and see. <laughs> Bring your bride with you if you likes. <laughs> It's locked, you see? Only room in the old house. It's that room. It must be. The one where that Sir Robert died. Oh, you women, you get something into your heads and it's the devil of a task to get it out of them. It could be, though, couldn't it? The only reason it's locked is because it's where they keeps their valuables. Stands to reason, don't it? They wants to keep us out. Oh, something in. How are we going to get in, anyway? Solid oak, that is. The two of us could charge it, force it open. So, lad, what do you say? I don't know. I think the way... Think? That when were it your job to think? You leave that to me. Sorry, Martin. You ready then? Up to three. One, two, three. Ah. It, it moved. I felt it. Again. One, two, three. Ah. Again. Stop, you mustn't. One, two, three. Ah. Gust of air, that's all. The window. Someone must have left it open. That's better. Angel, get that lamp in here, will you? So, where's all these valuables you were talking about? Ain't nothing here but that bed. Well, what's that on the pillow? Oh, you see? What did I tell you? Looks like some kind of jewellery case. You think so? Yeah, open it. Ain't nothing precious in there. Well, I don't know, something like that. Must be worth something, mustn't it? Do not forget. What? That's what it says, you see. Inlaid there inside the lid. So what's it mean? What am we made to forget? It's your Mr Myers. The one what never forgot his lost love. This is... It's his room. Oh, it could be anyone. Just look at that bed, though. It must have belonged to the master of the house. Well, grand, ain't it? Looks like you could lie down there and sleep a thousand years. An eternity. You can if you want. Pass the night in it, I mean. I thought we were going back to the tavern. Ooh, ain't no sense paying for some pokey old room when there's somewhere like this for gratis. Well, I ain't sleeping there, that's for certain. Ain't nothing going to happen to you with me here beside you. An angel just next door. Why next door? Well, I didn't imagine as you'd want to watch. But don't worry, we'll ring the bell if we want anything. Come to bed now, will you? What for? If you want your money, my girl, then by God you'll have to earn it. I may not be much to look at, but I ain't no devil neither. And I hope my coin's as good as any other. It's not that. 
is this room? Something about it, it don't feel right. Oh, it's cold, is all. You come over here now, see if I can't warm you up, eh? Yeah, that's better now, isn't it? Snug as two rats in a trap. A trap? Why'd you say that? It's an expression, is all. <laughs> Excitable little thing, isn't you? Well, what say I gives you something to get excited about, eh? What was that? What? You didn't hear nothing. There. You heard that. There's someone out there. No, it's just... It's getting closer. Hello? You all right in there? Oh, Lord Almighty, what you trying to do? You scared the poor girl half out of her wits. Seems like she weren't the only one. What you say? Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. We weren't asleep. Me neither. Why not? I don't know. Just couldn't, that's all. You all right, lad? Of course. I was just going down to the kitchen, that's all. Awful hunger I got. Was wondering if you wanted anything. Me? I've everything I need right here. Thanks all the same. How about you, Molly? You want anything? I, I don't know what there is. Well, come with me if you like. What are you playing at, lad? Nothing. Just thought you might want to see. For herself, I mean. Couldn't wait your turn, that it? No, I, I just Go want... on. Take her. It ain't like that. Take her, I say. Well, come with us if you like. No. You go have your fun. Just be a good lad and make sure you brings her back after. Oh, oh careful now. Oh, sorry, I... Let me like. I must have slipped. Take me arm if you like. Don't want you falling now, do we? You see the larder anywhere? Why? You hungry? I thought that's why we came down here. Reason I brought you. It weren't to eat. Then what was it? I want you to go. Leave this place. Why? We should never have come here. What we've done, it's a bad business and you were better out of it. But it's done now. We're here. Please. I don't understand. I didn't want to tell you, but... What? Lying there alone in the dark, all of a sudden, I felt like I weren't alone. That there was someone there, standing over me, watching. Who? I can't say. That's why you came to our room. Well, fact is, we ain't meant to be here. If we stay, I fear something terrible shall happen. Do you believe that? I don't know what to believe. For your sake, though, Molly, I shouldn't like to take the risk. Especially as it was us what brought you here. But the clothes I came in, I left them upstairs. And your friend... I know I... you was expecting payment. Here, take this. It's all I've got. But it's too much. I ain't done nothing to deserve it. Please, you take it and leave this very instant. Won't you come with me? What for? Don't you want to? Of course. But Mr Martin, were I to cut and leave him here alone, back on the ship, it shouldn't go well for me. Not well at all. But Angel... I ain't no angel, Molly. My name, it's Ned. Goodbye, Ned. I shan't forget you. Quickly now. What's that? Oh, just him upstairs. Wants you back, doesn't he? Well, don't you satisfy him. Impatient, ain't he? He rang twice. Well, don't you pay him no mind now. Well, what's happening? Why does it keep ringing? Oh, look. But you go, now. Run. You hear shouting? Please. Well, there's something wrong. Go! Martin! What is it? What's the matter? Back in the tavern, I slept not a wink all night. I never said where I'd been, and once I'd handed over the money, none thought to ask. I lay in my bed all night, imagining what might have passed in that house after I'd gone. I'm here. 
What's wrong? Open the door. It's got burned. It can't be. We we broke the lock. Help me quickly. He's come again. He's here. Who? Who is it? You ain't real. You ain't. It was just a story. Martin. Save me, Angel. Save me. The door. It won't move. Martin? Martin, you there? Answer me! I told myself it was my fancy, no more, and resolved to put such thoughts from my mind. Yet even as I slept, word of that night's events was sweeping through the city, and the next day the story was everywhere. The newspapers... They told of how two sailors had broken into the empty house and how they'd slept in a room kept locked since any could remember. Apparently, something they'd seen so terrified them that the elder of the two, Robert Martin, had thrown himself from the window, his falling body impaled on the railings below. An iron spike, they said, had pierced him directly through the heart, killing him that very instant. The other... Ned Blunden was found crying and shouting in the street outside. None could get no sense of him, and even when they took his companion down, he continued to rave, saying nothing of what had happened but only babbling of subjects not to the point, such as love and hope and time. With none to care for him, he was confined to an asylum for the insane. In the days that followed... I often thought to visit him there, but each time would reach the gate, only to turn back at the very last. Perhaps it was fear kept me away, perhaps guilt, for had it not been for me, my desire for escape, for adventure, we should never have gone to the house that night. And while I'd found what I'd sought, and more besides, it was he and his friend who'd paid the price... Perhaps that's why I never told another what I'd seen, who in any case would have believed me, much less understood. For better or worse, that story, it was my secret, my burden. The dress I took I kept buried away in a chest where none might find it, a chest I would open for no man, right until the very end. Yet even now, when all hopes and dreams are behind me, those events live still in my remembrance, where I recount them again and again, now and always, so none may hear but the ears of the dead. Midsummer. I have heard in other places the sun beats down and the days are long and still. But here, <laughs> we are stuck behind a mountain. The wind blows round in circles like a demented dog. That cloud looks like a face. Isn't that a Rupert the Bear scarf? In the sky. Round your neck, idiot. No. <laughs> Flipping well is. Damn you. How old are you? My mother made me wear it. Oh, what did she do? Threaten to take away your pocket money? She still thinks I'm seven. This is a great place for a date. Sorry. A field. And where else could I take you? There's only the pub and then everyone would see us and know. Know what? That we're on a date. Who cares? You're the one who sneaked out to the window. You'd think they'd have loosened up a bit now we've left school. I blame God myself. Do you? As soon as I get to college, I'm going to become an atheist. I'm going to get broadband. Are you? I'll email you. Swansea's not that far from Newport, you know. I'll be too busy with all my new friends to be bothering with you. Oh. Don't be joking. What made you change your mind? About what? I've been asking you out for three years. You're the only boy left. Cheers. Sun's going down. I'll miss the sunsets. Come on. I'll reach you to the crossroads. Go! Oh, well, 
It's nice to meet you properly, Jenny. I just thought I'd pop round to see how you were settling in. You're the first visitor I've had. I know. You do? It's a small village. How'd you take your tea? Just milk. Have a seat. It must be strange living here after the city. That's just what I need. Why is that? Peace, quiet. Boredom. Boredom is good. You've only been here three months. You wait. Were you born here? Never left. And my mother and grandmother before me. But you don't live in the village itself? The cottage on the hill. It's isolated up there. I'm used to it. I have my work as a gardener. And I have my cat. You manage to get by? There are a lot of old people in the village who can't cope with their gardens on their own. What a great life. It gets lonely sometimes. The rest of the world isn't so great, you know. What was your last parish like? In a city, lots of problems. What kind of problems? Uh, drugs, crime, deprivation, apathy. Did people believe in God? Not like here. Must be a nice change. It's what I needed. Why? Have you been sent by the village to interrogate me? Everyone in Middlewich is curious about the new Methodist minister. I've noticed. There are rumours. You have a murky past. <laughs> what do you think? I think that you look like a tired man, Brice. You have no idea. I hope we can help you to recover. Can I ask you something? Anything. Who is the mad old woman who shouts from the clifftop every day? Motron. My great, great aunt. She seems to hate me. Not you. The church. Why? You're not the only one with a past. I am 111 years old. When I was a child, my mother told me of him. He came on a horse with a wide-brimmed hat, she said. He had eyes the colour of steel, she said. He cut down and burnt the fairy thorns and built a chapel. On a horse from the other side of the mountain he came. His name was Aberthol Christmas. I win. I let you win. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why'd you do that then? So that you owe me. You want something in return? I might do. What do you have in mind? What do you think I have in mind? I couldn't possibly imagine. Shall I help you imagine? Okay. I've been wanting to do that for months. I know. So have you. Maybe. I've seen the way you look at me. It's the rope at the bear scarf. Molly! Molly! Who is it? Over by the stile. Motron. What's she doing? Just sitting there. She's a proper lunatic. I don't know why she's not locked up. Who's there? Children. Here we go. Is, is it young Drew and, oh. and Rhiannon? Don't say anything. Hello, Motron. You still alive? I am. You heard you talking to yourself. I never talk to myself. What are you doing, sitting there? Oh, at this crossroads, the spirits gather. They fly in straight lines just above the ground. I, 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 I am fasting in preparation. She's rambling. The day after tomorrow is the summer solstice. The night I will see those to die in the next year walking past me along the corpse roads. Doomed figures. I don't like this. Shadowed by headless spectres. Okay. Oh, 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 Molly! Molly! Who the hell is Molly? Where's she Molly? going? God knows. Back to a cottage. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Oh, shut up. <laughs> We shouldn't be doing this. We're only kissing. Look, shall we do something midsummer night? My dad will never let me out. We don't have to tell anyone. What do you want to do? We could go down to the beach and light a fire. And do what? I don't know. It's a sin before marriage, you know. True. I thought you were an atheist. Give me a chance. It takes practice. I'd like to. What? You know, 
with you on the beach. Would you? But it's not right. This is the 21st century. Not in Middlewich. So is that a yes or a no? I don't know. You've got two days to weigh it up. Weigh what up? How much of a sin it is. Against? How much we want it. Down she went, under the ocean, her white nightdress dancing, her mouth gaping, her black hair streaming. Down, down, down where the wind didn't blow, and at the bottom of the sea the spirits found her and entered her body. It's lovely to see such a packed church here this morning in the middle of summer. Although obviously the weather does need what? to be decided. I'm still thinking about it. Good. I've checked the tides for tomorrow night. It's safe from 10 p.m. to 4. I have a plan. What? It's mad mud. What is wrong? We can't leave her screaming like that. She needs help. I'll see if I can talk to her. I'll come with you. Oh, where are you, child? It is near Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Oh, child, who is with you? It's Brees, the new minister. Brees? I came around to your cottage when I first arrived in the village. Another minister? Oh, get him away you from me. You wouldn't let me in. You need uh, to let us help you, Modron. He is watching. Who is? The first one. Eyes of steel. He watches from the underworld. Auntie, please. Who is she talking about? The church men come and take our children. Brice is a good man, I promise you. Ah, he is weak. No. He has no faith. You don't know anything about me. He will drive them to their death. That's <laughs> enough. The woman is insane. No. Tomorrow night the spirits walk, Jenny Vach. You will see them too. I won't. He built this chapel with his blood. What is she talking about? Oh, if they float, they are guilty. He punishes all those who sin. And he stole. Oh, we are all girls. <laughs> She's fitting. It's okay. I got her. We need the doctor. I'll fetch him. They say that he was seven foot tall with straight white hair that stood on end. His eyes burned with godly madness, and beneath his clothes he bound his body, head to toe, with strips of gauze. The heathens watched him make the cliff path. They watched him on his hands and knees. He hammered and split the freezing rocks, a staircase down to the crashing sea, and... Every day for a year they came. Every day he held them under until the land was washed of sin. Sorry it's so late. It's fine. I'm glad you came. How is she? Settled. The doctor gave her something to calm her down. How long has she been like this? As long as I can remember. No one did anything. They just stared out of the chapel windows. They're frightened of her. They believe she has the inner eye. What? You mean like a witch? Yes. <laughs> Tell me they don't really believe that. You drink a lot of tea, don't you, Brees? Do I? Why is that? Why have you changed the subject? Because she's my auntie, and us Narbots have suffered a lot. I'm sorry. Every village needs its outcasts. You're not an outcast in this house. A long time ago, a girl drowned on the beach. Some people say it was during a baptism. What do others say? They keep their mouths shut. Her name was Molly Narbert. A distant relative? She was only 18. People say she haunts the cliffs. How come you're not married, Jenny? No one wanted me. It's the green eyes. I like the green eyes. Do you? Yes. I'm bad luck. I don't believe it. I think Auntie was right about you. What do you mean? 
You are a weak man with no faith. That's not funny. Why did you come here? We're all fighting our own demons. What are your demons? Can I trust you? Of course. Drink was my demon. Not pots of tea, I take it. I was out of control. I think I would quite like to see you out of control. Don't! Okay. I am a weak man with no faith, remember? Your secret is safe with me. I will find God again, Jenny. You won't find him here. What came over the mountain all those years ago might have looked like God, but it was something else. What was it? Something evil. It brought the wind with it. You sound like Modron. She thinks I have the gift like her. Do you? I'm no pagan. I believe in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't mean to offend you. Good night, Brice. Uh, are you going already? Do you want me to stay? Stay? You mean... I, well, I... I was joking. <laughs> of course. You must drink your only weakness. Good night, Jenny. He came on a horse over the mountain. He came wearing a white-brimmed hat. Eternal damnation on his tongue of red. He, he came to stamp out the old ways and to drive the Tilworth Teg from the land. And after he had baptized the living, he built the Chapel of White with his bloodied hands. Good morning. Good morning. It's Drew, isn't it? I've been looking for you everywhere. I needed to get some fresh air. I thought I'd brave the wind and clip the yew hedge. Aren't you cold? You're not wearing a coat. It's good to suffer a bit sometimes. How can I help you, Drew? I need to ask you something. Okay. It's kind of private. Shall we go inside? Y yeah. Cup of tea. Uh, no, thank you. I've had too many cups this morning myself. Oh, I... Thought you'd have a television. Everyone thinks you're very modern. I'm trying to live simply. I, I probably shouldn't have come. Why not? You won't understand. Try me. You're a man of God. I'm still a man, Drew. What's on your mind? Do you think sex before marriage is a sin? Okay. It's just you seem a bit more open-minded than the last minister. He was very old and strict and not like you at all. This is complicated. I'm crazy about it. I think I love her. Of course, love is what is important. I don't want to go to hell. Who told you you'd go to hell? You mean I won't? What about Rhiannon? If you love each other and are both committed to being together, then I'm sure neither of you will go to hell, Drew. I think we do love each other. I'm not advocating promiscuity, obviously. No, of course not. I wouldn't want anyone to think that. We're going to camp on the beach tonight. I don't need to know the details. We just wanted to make sure it wasn't a sin first. My view is that as long as the two of you care about each other... We do! Uh, thanks, Minister. You are a modern man, it's true. I'll be going now. Uh, Drew, just a moment. Dressed in white, the water was cold for a midsummer day. He stood in his shirt sleeves, the water up to his waist. Her womb was still bleeding as he held her under, her baby screaming from the sun. He says, guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Rihanna? Rihanna? Over here! Why haven't you got your torch on? I didn't want anyone to see us. Just don't stumble off the cliff. Don't say things like that. It's a long way down. Have you got the side up? Yes. <laughs> I've never been here at night before. Makes you think of all those stories. Don't. It's easy to get cut off by the tide. I know. Are you sure this is a good idea? I told you, I spoke to the new minister. Okay. I can't see the steps. Down here, look. Why are they shining like that? Moonlight, I suppose. What moon? I checked my watch. Is yours right? Yes. 
We have to keep an eye on the time. Come on, then. You sure we should? They're just stories. Okay. Shall we hold hands on the way down? Like that. Hello? It's Jenny. I need to come in. It's very late. Are Drew and Rianne on here? No. Have you seen them? I saw Drew this morning. What did you talk about? It was a private matter. You need to tell me. He came to me in confidence. Oh, God. Motram was right. What? You need to leave before anyone else gets here. What are you talking Trust about? Trust me. We're both outcasts, remember? I know you didn't mean it, but they won't understand. Are you okay? Yeah. Never been down here before. I thought you had. And my dad never let me. My mum never let me. You haven't been here before either? No. Why does it feel so strange? No wind. You're right. It's so still. How come? Something to do with the cliff sheltering it, I suppose. But I thought the wind came off the sea. I don't know. Let's build a fire and get drunk. Good idea. Yep. I'll collect some driftwood. Sixteen and barefoot in a white dress. He took her down the path on a summer night. He told her not to call the spirits and not to use her wicker ways. They stood alone. He peeled off his clothes in a cave that dripped with cold. She saw his giant bleeding body bound in gorse. She felt the thorns rip through her skin. And in her pain she saw herself, Molly, a white ghoul flying through the night, and she knew her death was now foretold. And the dead watched and wept for her soul. You all right? Yeah, why? You look cold. I look cold. You look white. Do I? Uh, it's this cave. It makes us look weird. It's a good spot. Better than camping in the wet sand. Great fire. Mm. Look at all the shadows he's making in the room. Mm. I don't like them at all. Uh, have we finished the cider? Yeah. What do you want to do now? Mm. Should we go for a swim? Naked? Naked. I'll race you in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> here and get into the sleeping bag. Sure you want to? Yeah, I'm sure. Wait! Why are you running? Why are we at the crossroads? She's not here. Who? Modron. It's midsummer night. I thought she'd be here. Why? The spirits of the dead congregate at crossroads. Modron can see them. Why isn't she here? She'd know what to do. Will you tell me what is going on? Rhiannon and Drew are missing. They climbed out of their bedroom windows this evening. They're not missing. They're at the beach. Little Witch Beach. They're gone camping. It's nothing to worry about. You knew? Drew came to ask my advice. About what? He was worried that he'd go to hell if him and his girlfriend had sex before marriage. Obviously, I told him that that was a bit of an extreme viewpoint. You've been very irresponsible. For God's sake, Jenny, it's not a sin anymore. It is in this village. A Berthold Christmas is still here. The preacher who built the chapel? He died in the 19th century. He's in the land. He's in the wind. He's still here. That is superstitious nonsense. Rhiannon and Drew are our last young ones. A Berthold Christmas has taken the rest. What? He leads them into sin, and then he punishes them. It has always been this way, ever since he came here. He's dead, Jenny. Listen. That's him. Get into me now. 
I don't want to see anything. I don't want to see any spirits. You don't have the gift you told me yourself. He was never a man of God. He was the devil. A seven-foot beast with a red tongue who came from nowhere. He's tricked you. He knew what you would say to do. What do you want from me? We need a true believer now, please. Someone who has a strong faith. That's not me. It has to be you. You're all we have left. Oh, God. We must get to them first. They say she walks the beach at night, her wet white dress stained with blood. Sometimes she weeps, her body trembling for her baby girl taken from her, and for all the children washed out to sea, cold and alone under the waves. Was... was that okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you feel? Mm, I think I love you. I think I love you too. I can't wait until we leave this village. I'll come and visit you every weekend. I'd like that. We won't have to sneak off to the beach to do it then. We can actually do it in a bed. Imagine. <laughs> the tide's turning. we better keep an eye on it. We've got a bit of time. Let's see how far in the cave goes first. Oh, okay. God, it's dark in here. I hope the torch doesn't run out of battery. Why did you have to come to this place? I wanted to make a difference. I hope you can. This is my chance. Something has changed. What? I can feel that God is in me. I really believe he is. I know he is. Do you? I believe in you. Your hair is blowing in your eyes. No, but hair. So black. We are all cursed with it. You're not cursed, Jenny. I hear you, Polly. I hear you. Look! On the cliff top! Uh, Modron! What is she doing? And dear! The spirits are flying. Oh, Heavenly Father! What is it? I can see them! It's just the wind! I can see them! You're an abbot, child. We are all seers. We have to get Drew and Rhiannon off the beach. It's yours. Our church is to blame for this. Built with the blood of a rapist and a murderer. I don't want to see them. I want to believe in Jesus Christ. She was my grandmother. Drowned for being a witch. Her six-day-old baby daughter orphaned. Where is the path? Jenny, look at me. It's over there. My God. The tide is coming in. I'm going down the steps. We are all condemned spectres. Abarthal Christmas has cursed us all. Priests! I'll find them. Wait for me! With his bare hands, he cut those steps down to hell. I can see something. The spirits are moving past us. Oh, the death is now foretold. Hurry! Please! Need to swim around. Need to be strong. Hurry! I can't do it. I can't do it. Preacher, dressed in black, kick him. Over the mountain on horseback, kick him. Seven foot tall, with eyes of steel. We can't go on much further. It's getting narrower. Mm. What's the time? My watch has stopped. Oh. Yeah, shine the torch on mine. It's not working. Listen. See? No! Oh, quick, back to the beach! Tides cut us off! We have to swim! It's too rough! There's no way up the path now, is a shirt left? How did this happen? We've only been in here ten minutes! You're gonna drown! Oh, back in the cave, there might be a way through! We are all weak. Oh, Father. What in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. I'm sorry. I'm sorry! It's 
the end of the cave. We can't go any further. That's it then. That's it. The sea's rising. I don't want to die. Oh, the torch is running out of batteries. Put your arm around me. Look. Where does she come from? Who is she? Please, don't let me die. Why is she crying? Because she can't help us. She's coming over. Hold my hand. According to the earliest surviving work on architecture, Vitruvius's De Architectura, good buildings should have beauty, venustas, firmness, firmitas, and utility, utilitas. Made you a cup of coffee, love. Oh, thanks, Cole. Thought I'd try and sort that mess out at the bottom of the stairs. Then I'll rustle us up some pesto for dinner. Thank you for my coffee. No problem. And for cleaning up downstairs. Also, no problem. And homemade pesto is my very favourite dinner. Mm, I know. Now, don't study too hard. As if. Colin. Lovely Colin. And Colin and me will be together forever. I really know it. I knew it the first moment we met. Some people would have called it a holiday romance, or on the rebound, or any of those other miserable phrases people use. I had to get away. I was low, so two months, three weeks, and six days ago, I packed a bag and headed for the sun. It was the most perfect setting. Is that a Glasgow accent? My granny used to live in Edinburgh. A terrible chat up line. But his eyes were so brown and hair so soft and, and the air was so warm and a cool breeze whispered and caressed. The azure blue of day gave way to the indigo of night. And who wouldn't fall in love with Colin? Who wouldn't? The Echelon Plan, 1880 to 1932. Of course, Coming back to Britain was like thundering back to Earth. But there was no way Colin and I wouldn't be together. Echelon plan. After two blissful weeks where the dark troubles of the past had been eclipsed by the pleasures of the present, Colin had to go back to work. Drains. People block them up. I clear them out. Some folk don't think it's glamorous, but you soon notice if nobody did it. I went to a local travel agent. Colin had drains to clear in Yorkshire, and me, I could live anywhere. 24, Rose Tree Cottage. No roses, no trees, and not a cottage. But nevertheless, a perfectly solid two up, two down. I'm out at work five, sometimes six days a week. Welcome to your new home. It was all very different. Suddenly so very, very different. Now... I've heard all these arguments about modern living and who should do what, but the way I see it is this. I'm the one out earning money, so you have to do something to earn your keep. I finished just before five, by the time I've been for the pint, driven home, it's uh, past six. It takes to be on the table, 6.25, OK. Echelon. A level of responsibility or authority in a hierarchy. A rank, for example. A job in the company's lower echelon. Hello, Mum. I'm fine. I'm not ill anymore, Mother. I'm in England. Yes, England. There you are, Colin. 6.25, dinner on the table. I like shepherd's pie. And I like Yorkshire pud. I like meat, two veg, and occasionally dessert. I, I like curry but only when it's really hot and it's from the Raj Mahal. I don't eat foreign crap. It's just pasta in a mushroom and broccoli sauce. I don't care what it is. It looks like mug and I'm not having it. This pizza's in the freezer. Shove one of them in the oven. Uh, pub quiz at the Bramwell this weekend. First Saturday of the month. Right as rain. Pub quiz. We'll take the car. I'll be getting mullered so you'll be driving back. Now, Rob... He knows everything about sport. 
And Wendy knows entertainment and fashion. Anything about drains? Well, I know that. And trivia. <laughs> I know a lot of trivia. I found some old encyclopedias in the loft. With you with nothing else to do during the day, you can learn those encyclopedias. Our team will be champions in no time. Simple. Let's start at the beginning, eh? The early form of architectural echelon plan is called Broad Arrow, 1880 to 1890. The best example of Broad Arrow echelon plan is Hyroids Hospital, formerly West Riding Pauper Lunatic Asylum in West Yorkshire. You keeping your eyes on the road? After pub quiz, I'm in no state to drive home. Or direct, either. Wow! Colt, look at that! What is that? That huge Great Victorian building there! Look! Through those trees! Oh, that? Hyroids. It's an old mental hospital. Claws now. Hyroids? What a terrible name! Yeah. They should have called it Nuthouse or Looney Bin. I just <laughs> meant it looks so stately. And homely, if you're a nutter. Yeah, it gives me the creeps. Anyway, here we go. Enough talk of loonies of the past. Let's go drink with some loonies of the present. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. I'm just wondering if it's possible to get in. If you're with the film crew, I'll have to get one of them to come and get you. No, I'm not with the film crew, I... You're with the property developers, then? Because you'll have to get them to give me a call. I'm not with the property developers or the film crew. I, I just wondered if I could come and have a look round the building. No. Go away or I'll set the dogs on you. Although the main gate was a no-no, there was another second gatehouse which was abandoned, and the grounds themselves, though surrounded by hedge and ditch, offered endless opportunities for those willing to climb. But once I was through... The land was so huge and flat and open. This was a space a person could be seen in. I took cover behind a row of conifers marking the boundaries of a disused bowling green and stood for a moment, thinking. Hello. Oh, uh... Sorry, didn't mean to make you jump. Uh, no, no worries. I was just... <laughs> but to be honest, it's quite reassuring. At least you're not a ghost. Huh? Or if you are a ghost... And you're not a very scary one. <laughs> Apparently, there's anything up to 4,000 unmarked graves in these grounds, so they're meant to be absolutely swarming with ghosts. Oh, uh, I'm Scottish. <laughs> not from round here, neither am I. Let me guess, you're here for episode three. I've heard them say there was a new girl coming in for episode three. I'm Angela. Pleased to meet you. I'm Lisa. Angela. But then I've told you that already. I'm not an actor. Now, we're all actors when we put our mind to it. No, I, I'm just interested in the hospital. I saw it from the road and wondered if it was a good building. Well, it's quite sweet, I suppose. In a haunted sort of way. This hospital is the best example of broad arrow echelon design in the country. Hmm. Venustas, firmitas, utilitas. Beauty, firmness, utility. You've heard of it? Always thought firmness was the most important. Mm. Once you have firmness, getting the other two is no problem. <laughs> Come on then, let's have a walk around. Oh, no, not that way. If the caretaker sees me, I'll be in trouble. Don't worry, you're with me, and I'm always in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I was so glad I met Angela. She was so easy to be with. Though that day we first met at Hyroids was only one month, three weeks and two days ago, I felt like we'd known each other all of our lives. Angela, why do you want to find a ghost? Because no matter how scary they are, I bet they're not as frightening as the living. They can't sleep with your mother or tell their sister to spit on you. They can't nick all your money and try to run off to the oil rigs. And they report you to the police when you're only trying to get even. They're stuck, suspended in time and space. Like travellers on the Northern Line. <laughs> in here! Come on! You'll definitely want to see in here! 
Angela, if we're going to get into the building, shouldn't we use an open door? One that hasn't been boarded up? Where's your sense of adventure? <coughs> well, why don't you speak to the film crew? Wouldn't they let you in? You know, you moan so much, you really could be an actor. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. At last. Off to you. Echelon plan. Wow. A corridor. No shoot, Sherlock. Oh, it's cold. Heating's off. Colder in here than it is outside. Like I say, heating's off. Oh, they're creepy. Deserted Victorian mental hospital goes with the territory. This way. It's really dark down there. Oh, shut up and come on. So quiet, Angela. Silent. Hospital corridors are never silent. Never. Imagine what this would have been like in its glory days. Just push open these doors. Here. Oh. Well? Wow. Is this the ballroom? Full marks. Angela, how did you know this was here? How did you know this was here? Ah, well... I read somewhere that this hospital had a ballroom. It's one of the things that I... Desperately wanted to see. I present myself. Actress and mind reader extraordinaire. Incredible. Look at those chandeliers. On the outside, you'd never guess this was here. On the outside, Lisa. You never guess anything. I have to go. I've got to cook Colin his dinner. Colin? We... I live with him. Meet you at the clock tower. Noon tomorrow. Echelon. Mashed potatoes. Good. Broccoli. Not eating that. And steak pie. Not bad. Not bad. Not foreign muck at least. Looks nice. It looks so nice, it looks shop bought. Is this shop bought? Yeah, just from... I don't want shop bought. Could cook it myself if it was shop bought. More potatoes? I don't know. Uh, are you going to tell me they were shop bought? I mashed them myself. Oh, I should count myself lucky then, should I? Yeah, this house is a mess. Every night I come home through a pigsty. What were you doing all day? Studying. I should think so too. After that last fiasco at Bramwell. Well, I've lost in the past but never as badly as that. And just as well you're good to look at, because you've nothing much else going for you. Sometimes with Colin, it crossed my mind it was a mistake. But... His eyes were so brown, and his hair so soft, and... We would work it out. Sweetheart, are you still on the line? Yes, Mum, I'm, I'm still here. Why won't you come back, even just for a couple of hours? I spoke to Tim the other day. He says he understands. He said he's told his sister that she's not to spit at you again. He says he knows it wasn't your fault. He says he won't come round the house again, and if you come back, we wouldn't see him any more. Have to go now, Mother. Can't talk. Who was that on the phone? Nobody called. Nobody's on the phone. Screw this. I'm going for a drink. Echelon, a formation of troops in which each unit is positioned at the left or right of the rear unit to form an oblique or step-like line. This way. Sorry? You heard. This way. I, I can't. I, I'm, uh, I'm waiting for someone. Angela. She's not coming. You know Angela? Everybody knows Angela. She's busy today, so she's not coming. Oh, right. She said, I have to show you around. Oh, no, really. I, I could just pot around myself. Angela said... I see. Uh, well, if it's not too much trouble, I'm Lisa. I know. And you are? Martha. This way. Uh, are you an actress like Angela is? Do I look like an actress? Uh, no. No. In here. Angela said I had to show you in here. The main entrance? I, I didn't think it was open. You can get in this way. I don't think it's open. Uh, oh. It is now. 
In you go. Maybe we should wait for Angela. I told you, she's not coming. It's my job to show you this bit. Right. Well, in that case... The main entrance. Wow, Martha, it's amazing in here. That black and white tiled floor is beautiful. And the archways... Up this way. Look over here. Italian mosaic, that is. And see, this bit of floor over here, that's a Yorkshire rose centrepiece. I've never seen something so intricate, so beautiful, so unexpected. I brought you here to show you the window. Window? Stained glass window, beautiful colours. Sunshine yellow and blood red and azure blue. Do you want to see the window? I, uh... Um... Probably you're not interested. Probably not something you're interested in. No, no, I, I'd love to see it. It's hard to get to. That's okay. I'm not pushing you. No, no, I know. I'm not pushing you. You said... Yes. Well, if you open the doors on this lift shaft... What? There's no lift anymore. Open the doors. Look up to the top. They put a stained glass window at the top of this lift shaft. You don't have to look. I, I just wondered why they would do that. I'm not the architect. You don't have to look. No. No, I want to. <coughs> Lean in then. If you look up high enough, you'll see it. I don't see anything. You have to lean in a bit further. Where is it? Right at the top. Lean a bit further in and look up to the top. Father. Father. Lisa! Oh, Angela, hello. <laughs> I thought you were busy today. Turns out, I'm not. Martha was just showing me... I know what Martha was doing. I'll get going then. Wait, aren't we going to see the stained glass window? Not today, apparently. Martha said there's a stained glass window at the top of the lift shaft. Martha says a lot of things. Martha's not a ghost, is she? No more than I am. Though, it's supposed to be very haunted here. Angela, you say it's haunted everywhere. Yes, but it's supposed to be. It's time for me to go. Lisa, we know all about Colin. When will he learn about us? How was the studying today? Oh, good. Good. Yeah, good. 6.25, dinner on the table, homemade chicken casserole. Homemade chicken casserole. Studying going well. Mustn't have had a minute to yourself. Well, you're worth it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, stick telly on, will you? Sure. Hello, Mother. Oh, I'm so glad you phoned. Never guess who I saw yesterday. Myra Jessup, Brian's mum. She said Brian's away on the rigs now, permanently. She said he's never around anymore. And all the money has all been paid back. Who are you talking to? What? Oh, on the phone. Who were you talking to on the phone? I... nobody. I... I wasn't. I was just talking to myself. Interesting day I had today. Got a couple of hours in between drains. So I think to myself, a couple of hours off, not too far from home. Nip back and see what herself is up to. So I did. Lunch time. I was home. You weren't here. You were out. So then I think, I'll get a pizza out of the freezer for me lunch. And guess what I saw in there? The very same homemade chicken casserole you supposedly cooked all fresh. You didn't tell me the truth, did you? You told me a lie. A big fat lie. So you can see me point, can't you? I mean, you can see me point. High Royal Hospital. Formerly Waste Riding Popper Lunatic Asylum. Finally closed its doors after 115 years in 2003 and presently lies empty, awaiting development. I knew you'd like the clock tower, Lisa. 
Stairs are a bit of a killer, but worth it, I think. Noisy, of course, when the clock's actually working. Come over here. Look at the view. I have to sit down for a bit. No. Stay. I should go. I really should go. The Whitaker brothers, no relation to Roger, built this hospital in 1887, with stone from their own quarry. So they had to build a railway line from their quarry to here, runs right by the Bramwell Arms. Apparently. Lisa. What? If you don't bring Colin to meet me, you won't ever see me again. Coming! Oh, yeah. yeah coming. I don't care if you clean like a pig and cook like a frog. You look quite good. And somewhere between those ears of yours, there's a brain. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Tonight, yeah, tonight, that brain helped me win Bramwell Pub Quiz. Championi! Championi! Oh. <sighs> car's a bit of a walk, isn't it? Yeah, well, there's no space in the car park. It was too busy. Oh, oh. oh I feel a bit peaky. There's an old shopping trolley here. If you get in, I'll push you. Great idea! Oh, 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 I love you. I mean, I like you. I come right off you, to be honest, but I like you again. Oh. <laughs> you know, I just looked down there and I could swear those as train tracks. <laughs> I want a train track. I'm a hand of choo choo train. Choo choo! Mm. Oh, it's not very comfortable. Yeah, I, I might just have a bit of a dose. He's sleeping. That's right, Martha. He's drunk. I slipped some parasidian in his dinner before we went out. That belonged to me. Well, it's not as if you were using it. My drugs, Angela. Mine. Only me should take them. Oh, Martha, they belong to us as well, remember? He's been quite nice tonight. Honest. He really was quite nice. Not nice enough. Give it here. My job. I'll push. And besides, the secret to a long-term relationship is more than just being quite nice. Now, quiet you two. Time for the guy to come to. Colin! Colin! Are you awake? Wakey, wakey, Colin! <gasps> What's going on? Oh. Dark. Where are we? Lisa, where's the car? Angela, actually. Where are we? And why is it so dark? In answer to your first question, Colin, my sweet, we are travelling along a corridor inside a disused Victorian mental institution. And in answer to your second, it is dark because there are no lights in here. And it is night time outside. Come on, let's get on with it. Martha, I'm talking. Where's the car? Lisa. Oh, man, it's always cars, this, football, that. I can see a pattern on the floor. My eyes are just in. There's a pattern on the floor. Uh, what's going on? Lisa? Italian mosaic, that is. With a Yorkshire rose centerpiece. Oh, Martha, please. Just seeing. Maybe we should give him another chance. Perhaps he might become the perfect partner all on his own. Will everybody please just stop interrupting? Who is everybody? What are you talking about? I don't see anybody. See, now you're blown up. No sense of ceremony. No sense of class. It's all very well to look good, Lisa. It's all very well to have brute strength, Martha. But you have to stand together. Resolute. Decided. Firm. All right, that's it. Stop the trolley. I've had enough. Stop. I, I'm, I'm getting out. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> you better have a good reason for this, Lisa. And it had better be a good one. I'm not in the mood for... Ooh. That last point must have been off. What's going on? What do we do now? Um... What is going on? If we all agree to cooperate, I'll help. Agreed. Agreed. It's a surprise, Colin. A surprise. We're going to have a party. What? A party. 
there's a surprise party arranged to celebrate winning the pub quiz. We just have to go up these stairs. One, two, Martha, three. Martha, not yet. Stairs? Party in a flat, is it? That's right. Seven, eight, nine. Martha. Who are you talking to? Me. Of course you, there's no one else here. To myself, I was talking to myself. Uh, first sign of madness, that is. Why didn't you tell me there was going to be a party? Because then it wouldn't be a surprise. True. Uh, will there be pizza? Or toast, even? Oh, my stomach's in rags. Oh, well, these stairs are a bit much, aren't they? 31, 32, 33. Lisa, stop talking in that stupid voice. She's doing my head in. So, uh, who else is going to the party? Oh, that's part of the surprise. From the moment I met you, Colin, I knew we'd always be together. 40. Yeah, very good. Look, what floor's this party on? The stairs are killing me. Oh, I hope they've got sausage rolls. Your eyes were so brown and your hair was so soft and... Venustas, firmitas, utilitas. None overpowering the others. I said, stop talking in that stupid voice. Five, six... Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, it said, said the stairs were killing him. So I thought... Not nice, Martha. Not impressed. Not impressed at all. Sorry. And the sausage rolls. Thought it was a nice touch. Well, Lisa never got to say her best bit. Sorry, Lisa. Architecture can be said to be a balance of three elements. Lisa, can we move on to another subject? Architecture this and architecture that. Let's push the boat out. Do something beginning with B. I want to go downstairs and see if Colin managed to clean up his mess. Oh, he's so much more likeable since he died. Let's go downstairs. Yes, come on, Lisa. Let's go downstairs. OK, but let me just phone Mum first. You know how she worries. Hello? Oh, sweetheart. Please tell me where you are. Everyone's out looking. You're even in the papers. And everyone understands you weren't yourself. And Brian's away on the rigs now. And Tim's sister wrote me a letter saying she'll never, ever spit at you. It's not too late. We can sort this whole thing out once you come home. Why don't you just come home? I am home, Mother. I, I am home. Reverend Stokes. Well, Bishop, um, I think you've seen me. Well, not at all, my boy. Have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> Look at you. That's quite a tan you have. It wasn't all sunbathing. No, no, indeed not. A peculiar region over there. You never seem happy unless there's a civil war on. The people I saw weren't very happy about it. Uh, no, no. Now, I've had a chat with Dr. Hanwell. She says the nightmares are still troubling you. A little. And your nerves? I'm, um, I'm fine, really. Oh, there's no shame in it, Martin. Even the strongest of us can be shaken by the ugliness of mankind. And it sounds like you've seen more than most. I just need some peace and quiet, that's all. Exactly. And a parish has just come up which would be perfect for you. A charming village called Chapworth in Leicestershire. Thatched cottages, two pubs, and a rather lovely 17th century chapel and vicarage. Wonderful gargoyles. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. It's always been one of my favourite stops when I'm doing my Episcopal rounds. A real farming community. Even the vicarage has a chicken coop. Bernie Mattock was there for 30 years, but he passed away last week. I thought of you immediately. Oh, well, well thanks. <laughs> well, it should be just the place for you to... Gather yourself. And there's not a war or a witch doctor in sight. Well, the witch doctors were the most civilised people out there. So, are you willing to take this on, sir? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. 
They're keen to get someone installed before Easter. It's a rather important weekend in the local calendar, so you'd better pack your case tonight. I believe they're planning a reception for you. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please, uh, thank you, thank you. Welcome to this very special Good Friday Parish Council meeting. Uh, I'm glad to see so many of you could make it. No doubt you're all very keen to have a look at our new vicar, who's made it here just in time for bottle kicking. So, may I present the Reverend Martin Stokes. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I look forward to meeting you all in person later. Yes, we do have rather a packed agenda this evening, so I'll press on to item one, the bottle kicking service. Now, Sue Barnes and Mary Dunmore have agreed to supply the flowers once again, so a big thank you to them. It's always such a beautiful display. The hair pie is being prepared by Amy Wilcox. Yes, yes. With hairs, <laughs> with hairs caught by Sid Barnes, and I'm sure it will be as delicious as ever. Uh, I'm sorry, hair pie. Uh, yes, uh, the pie. It's all part of the bottle kicking tradition. A giant hair pie is baked, uh, then blessed by the vicar, and distributed to the poor. Uh, I thought the bishop would have told you. No, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> anyway, that's the service on Monday morning. Now to item two the police and ambulance provision for the bottle kicking itself. The police are refusing to enter the field again, <laughs> but they're providing four offices for crowd control at the Bull and the Burton Arms. St John's Ambulance are sending two teams, and this year we have the helicopter ambulance on standby too, <laughs> which should be a treat for all the kiddies. No, no, sorry to butt in again, but uh, ambulances... <laughs> What do we need ambulances for? Uh, well, it can get a little rough out there. Shall we discuss this afterwards? I'm sorry, but is, is it violent, this bottle kick? The bishop really hasn't briefed you at all, has he? Right, um, uh, how to explain bottle kicking? Yeah, well, uh, Orion, uh, 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 yes, uh, Randall. Uh, if I might speak, Mr. Coop. Yes, yes. Uh, bottle kicking goes back a thousand years. It's a match between Chapworth and Gorming, that's the next village, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and we have it on the church's land, just up on the hill there, every Easter Monday. Now, each village fights to get the bottle, that's like a small barrel of beer, to their end of the field, and Chapworth has won it for the last eight years. <laughs> yes, yes, largely down to Randall's yes. efforts. Thank you, Randall. Thank you. So, that's the security side of things. Now, on to the schedule. The marching band will start at the church at 10 a.m., heading up to Sorry, the village... Sorry, Randall, um, yeah. <laughs> when you say fights, yeah. do you mean fights? Uh, it's oh, just well, horseplay, well, really. Well. Fatalities are very rare. I don't think I quite understand. It's a public fight in a field? Well, I know to people outside the village it, it can seem a little peculiar, <laughs> but... Yes, yes, sorry, you're right. I, I'm new. Carry on. <laughs> uh, right, <clears throat> Uh, so, the parade starts at 10 and reaches the bull at 10.30, where the is there hair blood? pie... I, I, I'm sorry. Blood? Is there bloodshed? Well, I just want to know what we're really. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> there are always cuts and bruises, yes. Reverend Stokes, maybe your uh, partner, sir, but... Yeah. Uh, Sid, yes. Bottle kicking's been going since the doomsday book, see? Yeah, 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 Reverend yeah, Maddock never had a problem with... It. Well, well I, I'm not Reverend Maddock. I, I, I'm just a little concerned. Fighting over beer in a field. It's very popular with the rugby boys. Well, can't we just share out the pie and celebrate Easter in peace? That's not the way we do things, Reverend. No. Well, it's just that, in my experience, violence can never be justified. No. Never. No. No. I, I, I think perhaps we should try something different this Easter. Uh, Reverend, Reverend. Uh, maybe you should see what you think after this year, in instead of rushing into a decision. Well, I'm, I'm sorry if you've made plans, but I'd prefer it if it didn't go ahead. I mean, the pie sounds like a fine idea, but not the fighting. What? Oh, uh, Reverend Stokes, oh, I, I know, I'm, I'm sorry, but there's no need for... Come on, then. Come on. Come. Oh. Reverend Stokes, it's the bishop for you. Oh, thank you, Mrs. C. I'll feed the chickens. <laughs> Uh, hello, Bishop. Martin, what on earth are you playing at? You haven't been there five minutes, and I'm already getting complaints. 
couldn't you have been a little more amenable on your first day? I know. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I give you a plum parish, and this is how you thank me. Banning bottle kicking. Well, I appreciate what you've done. I do, but, um... But there's enough conflict in the world without the church endorsing it. Well, you've certainly got a conflict on your hands now. Well, I didn't mean to cause trouble. I just... Well, why do people need to be so violent? Well, you can't change human nature, Martin. Not on your first day, anyway. These folk don't like strangers telling them what to do, so be careful. Very careful. I will be. Happy Easter, Bishop. And you. Hello? Who's that? Somebody there? Who's... who's there? Who is that? Hello? Hello? Ah, Randall and, uh, and Sid, isn't it? Reverend, and this is Joseph Dunmore, Mary's husband. Pull up a pew. No, thanks. I won't mince words, Reverend. Bottle kicking. You can't stop it. It has to happen, Reverend. It has to. The local economy here, see? We depends on it. The pubs always do well. It's bigger than Christmas. And the village museum. Mr. Cole gets more visitors at bottle kicking than rest of the year put together. It's our chance to show off the village. Every year, after bottle kicking, our prices round here jump. English tradition, beer and bunting, it's disappearing, Reverend. And it's what people want. Thousands come and see it. I'm really very sorry. But the land... Quiet, Joseph. He needs to understand, Randall. He won't budge, see? Tell him. Go on. All right. This might sound a little odd to you, Reverend, but my family has farmed this valley longer than anyone can remember. Sids and Josephs oh. and all. Fifty generations! Are you talking, or am I? Sorry. Fact is, Ryan Chapworth is some of the best farmland in the county. Over that hill, yields drop by half. Half! That's crops and animals and all. It's bottle-kicking, that's what does it. In a way, Joseph, in a way. Look, last time we didn't have bottle-kicking, we had foot and mouth. Yeah, so we and did. time before so that, we were 100 years ago, and we got potato blight. And you think there's a connection? Can't right? just be coincidence, Reverend. My stock have been looking jumpy ever since last night. They're rushing about all over. Bottle kicking is what sets Chapworth apart. We need it! The land demands it. Joseph, you weren't sneaking around here last night, were you? No. Uh, I, I, I made my position clear, gentlemen. I, I don't think we need bottle oh. kicking. I honestly believe we'd be better off without it. Well then, we'll be on our way. But if you want to stay in this village, Reverend, you'll need to change your attitude. Oh, you will. I, I know it's not the best of starts, but I just want to make Chapworth as perfect and peaceful as possible. Peace comes from strength, not cowardice. So says every dictator. This isn't over yet. Come on. Oh, Reverend Stokes, the phone's been ringing off the hook. The bishop called again, and the Arbor Mail are writing a feature. The national papers have been after you too. You were all over Richard and Judy. Don't worry, Mrs Cameron, it'll soon blow over. I've never known anything like it. You, uh, don't think, perhaps, that it might be best if you just let the boys get on with it on Monday. I don't think so, Mrs C, but, um... Thank you for the advice. I'm going to turn in, if you don't mind. I have to be up early for service tomorrow. Great you are. I didn't mean to interfere. You can't blame an old woman for worrying. <laughs> now, are you all right in that bedroom of yours? I know it takes a while to get comfortable somewhere new. <laughs> it's fine. Because if you're not sleeping, I could let you borrow some of my tablets if you were... Uh... 
Um, uh, I'm sorry. I heard that you'd had trouble sleeping in the past. The bishop. Uh, you can't keep a secret long in Chapworth. What happened to you out there? Well, nothing happened to me. I just saw too much and didn't do enough. I'm keeping you from your bed. I'll be off. Well, thanks. Oh, oh, and before you go, did you happen to hear anything strange outside last night? Strange? Hmm, sort of, um, scraping sound. No. Oh, <laughs> that'll be the foxes. Oh, they do make a racket. It's the time of year for them, you see. <laughs> foxes, yes. Well, that must be it. I'll be over the road if you need anything. Sleep well. Who's that? Show yourself. I'm not... I'm not scared, you know. I'll call the police. Don't just hide out there. Oh. Awesome. Oh. Be still. What? How did you get in here? My name is Obadiah Bassett. I am Ned Barnes. Herod Dunmore. Uh, but how did you... We come and go as we wish. That's right. Hang on, hang on. Did you say your name was Bassett? Young Randall is my blood. <sighs> Joseph is mine. And Sid? Bows. Through and through. Yeah, but, but, but this is this is consecrated land. If, if you are what you say you are, I cast you out in the name of God Almighty. I banish you from this place. I, I banish you. <laughs> banish us. We were here before God knew this village existed. Old as the hills. You can't dismiss us with a few words and a cross of wood. Ancient powers, Parson. Neither God nor death can stop us. Our bodies may have rotted, but our scythes and our sickles are still sharp. Bottle kicking will happen, Parson. Your only choice is whether you watch it from your side of the veil or from ours. Think on, Parson. The land demands blood. You have until tomorrow night. Change your mind, or we'll be back for you. All of us. Shock. The message is bad enough. 
be gone or be buried. On Easter Sunday, too. I have to wash my hands. No, just, just try to clean the wall as best you can. Me? But I'm not sure no, that no, I... No, no, please. Reverend Stokes, I'm a housekeeper, not a... Do it. I, I have to get ready for this morning's service. It's a big day. We can't give in to this. We can't. Shall I call police? No, no, no. But shouldn't we find out who did it? I don't think the police can help us now. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, please, please be seated. England's green and pleasant land. And when Blake wrote those words, I'm sure he was imagining thatch cottages, friendly pubs, the village fete in summer, a land very much like Chapworth. Now, as some of you know, I spent years working overseas, seeing life in very different lands, lands where evil has been allowed to triumph. Now, those lands are anything but pleasant, though once they were as peaceful and as prosperous as the England of Blake's imagination. So why did they change? What turns a place from pleasantness to wickedness? Modern life, you may say. Newcomers, a loss of tradition, you might well say that. But I have learned a great deal about the nature of evil. In all the countries I've been to, in all the civil wars and massacres I've seen, the causes have never been modern. They're ancient. Old grudges, long-standing feuds, a belief that one group has a prior claim on another's property. And all too often, in a bid to hang on to their land, people sacrifice what made it pleasant. Land is just dirt. It isn't worth fighting over, no matter how old or valuable that dirt may seem. Now, what is important is peace. And for all its, its women's groups and flower arrangements, Chatworth has not been at peace for many, many years. Now, I'm sure you all saw the wall outside this morning. Regrettably, a campaign of intimidation has been run against me since the day I arrived here blackmailing me into allowing violence and evil to maintain their grip on this village. I have seen what violence can do to a community, and I cannot stand aside this time. Those who witness evil, who allow it to happen, become corrupted by it. Even if they start with noble intentions, the evil takes control of them eventually. So whatever consequences I might face, whatever the personal risks, whatever the stigma or the danger, for the sake of Chapworth, bottle kicking will not go on. Please stand for hymn number 278. Thank you very much. Very, 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 very nice to see you. No, 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 no. Thank you. Very brave. Thank you. Reverend? Didn't expect to see you here. I had to hear it with my own ears. I hope you're proud of yourself. You've taken away my livelihood. My Mary will never do the flowers for you again. You've condemned every man and woman in this village to poverty. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm sure the yields will be just as good. What do you know about it, eh? Calm down, Sid. Joseph, go back home. Mary's waiting for you. Calm down. He's ruined us. Not yet. <laughs> Lovely sermon, Reverend. Very eloquent. Well, there's still another day between now and bottle kicking. And another night. Who knows if you'll even be here come morning. Well, there's no need for threats, Wendell. That's exactly what I want to avoid. I'm not threatening. I'm just saying you may see this whole business differently by daybreak. Ah. God bless. No, 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 no. Banner. Banner Tanta. Banner. Banner Tanta something. God, what was it? Bloody owl. How far? 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. That's right, parson. On your knees. Are you too scared to face me alone? <laughs> Fifty generations of farmers and farmhands behind me, and I'm the one who's scared. <laughs> you can't bully this village anymore, Obadiah. How will you stop me? Oh. Holy water. Was that your plan? I had faith. Aaron, show the parson how sharp you keep that sickle. I. <laughs> Stop him! Vicious streak. Open wide, parson. <laughs> Tell him to turn the other cheek so you can match him up. <laughs> the pain real enough for you, parson. Starting to believe in the power of the land. <laughs> the land demands blood. That's right. And tonight it shall have plenty of it. Your milksop god will not save you, parson. I know he won't. But this will. A chicken. You can't defeat a thousand years of blood with a chicken. There are many ways of driving out evil spirits. I wanna do. Ataya wanna dedu. Ataya wanna dedu. What's he doing? Ataya wanna. Obadiah. Ataya tanda bancha. Ataya tanda bancha. Ataya banda wanna dedu. Ataya banda wanna dedu. Stop it now. Ataya banda wanna dedu. What's happening? Ataya banda wanna dedu. Ataya banda wanna dedu. Ataya bancha. Ataya bancha. Ataya bancha wanna dedu. Man, no! Don't listen to it! It's a trick! It must be! Obadiah Bassett, leave this world! I cast you out! This is... There you go. Cheers. Thank you, Bishop. Ah. <clears throat> Never seen this place so quiet on an Easter Monday. It's rather nice, actually. Well, it suits me. I don't think they'll miss bottle kicking too much. I was talking to Bill, the landlord, and he said that all the mess and bother was never worth the money anyway. Well, I'm sure he's right. Mind you, with all the reporters and television crews sniffing around, Chatworth's had more exposure than ever. Mr Coyle said the museum's been packed. Well, that's good. You don't seem yourself, Martin. I'd have thought you'd be delighted with how it's all turned out. Well, not without sacrifices. Yes. I just hope your face heals soon. The cameras are waiting. <laughs> your stand on bottle kicking has raised the profile of the whole church. Items on the news, debates on the radio. People are starting to respect the power of prayer again. Some prayers are more powerful than others. Well, I don't know what prayers you've been saying, but they seem to have been answered. Just look at this village now. The people are happy, the sun's in the sky, peace reigns supreme, and all thanks to you. I found that peace comes from strength, Bishop. 
And I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger. In the Parson by David Varela. Martin Stokes was played by Mark Baisley, Mrs. Cameron by Lynn Verrill, and Bishop Milcock by Geoffrey Beavers. Randall and Obadiah were played by Wayne Foskett, Sid and Ned Stephen Hogan, and Joseph, Herod and Derek by Gerard McDermott. The director was Luke Frail. <laughs>